the three main objectives are a survey of black holes, looking for the role of black holes in our universe. We know they're associated with the galaxies. We don't know exactly why that association exists. By looking in the hard x-ray, we'll be able to peer through the dust that shrouds those and learn more about the physics. That's one objective. Another is to look at the remnants of exploding stars. They glow in the hard x-ray, in, in the x-rays that you this experts you'd see in your dental office or your medical office, so that tens of kilovolts. So the, the objects that are lit up like that will be seen in New Star. We'll be able to take pictures and show what the distribution of that matter is and tell us a lot about how stars explode. And we'll also be looking at some of the more extreme objects in the universe, objects with high magnetic fields, very high gravitational fields, which tend to produce hard x-rays. Livermore's been involved in New Star for a number of years. In fact, it was a partner on the original HEFT platform, the High Energy Focusing Telescope, which was a balloon-borne platform that was developed back a decade or more ago that actually proved the technology that allowed us to propose New Star to NASA. So back at 2001, 2002, Livermore developed the technology, the optics, the things that focus the X-rays, and was part of a collaboration which included Caltech and other institutions that launched HEFT and took some of the first pictures in the hard x-ray of, of the hard x-ray sky. Now Livermore continues its role in the optics, working on the design and the calibration, as well as my role is uh, uh, developing the payload. So New Star is a small explorer. It's NASA's terminology for one of their smaller science platforms. It's about 165, 170 million life cycle costs. One of the ways we achieve that efficiency is by using a launch vehicle, a rocket which is transportable. It actually will bolt to the belly of an airplane. And you can see the carrier aircraft here. And here's the rocket. Soon after the, the, uh, the aircraft drops that, it will bank out of the way, and the uh, rocket will ignite and go on up to the orbit of 600 kilometers. So it's a very effective way for us to get down to the equator and get the kind of orbit we want without requiring ground support and a bunch of logistical operations. So uh, the, all of the data eventually become public for all NASA missions. My particular interest is in supernova remnants. So as it, the data come in, we'll be building up maps and histories and time histories of what's going on. And we'll be looking at that data against our theories and how these objects actually work. Because we've got this factor of 100 or more more sensitivity than before, we really will learn a lot by looking at the data and seeing whether the theories even make sense. So comparing that, revising those, and getting a much better picture of why supernovas act the way they do or why black holes are associated with certain kinds of galaxies. It'll be really exciting because we really don't know what we're going to see.